question number one. What did love at first sight? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it was love at first sight, but there was definitely intrigue and there was just something so different that I could not get enough of and I had to figure it out. Uh, kind of. It was different than anything I had ever like, experienced before. The, I remember the very first time I saw her, uh, it, it was like an out of body experience. I remember the best way I can describe it is uh, not even just when we met for the first time, but those first few weeks were so intense. Uh, and not just not just a physical attraction. It, it was just it, it was it was magnetic. It felt like we were two magnets that had been hurtling towards each other for 28 years, and that was the moment of impact. Um, so I, I won't say it was love at first sight, but the, it was definitely different than I, I remember. I couldn't I couldn't get away from her. I couldn't like I looked at her and it was it took my breath away. It was like. <laughs> And she knows exactly what I'm saying right now, because <laughs> I've not actually seen me do that before. <laughs> but that's that was that was what it was like the first time I saw her, and then uh, the the love shortly followed. <laughs> so I, a, a mutual friend of ours, posted a video of them two dancing to a worship song in the car. He, Derek was driving our friend home, and. Our friend posted a little caption in the corner that said, "This is a man of God," and was explaining was explaining how awesome Derek was, and that really caught my interest. One, because I thought he was cute, and two, because of how highly his friends spoke about him. So I added him, and then that's you asked how we met. Yeah. Was that your question? Yeah. So uh, I added him, and then Derek added me back, and then I found any excuse to, <laughs> to reach out to him. So he posted something about a, a church service, so I reached out and used that as an excuse, and I asked him about it. And he kept the conversation short, and so then I think it was, he just left it off at, I'll, I'll let you know when the next one happens. So that happened in October. Fast, so out of sight, out of mind, because I was not about to chase him, and I stopped messaging him. February came, and that's when he reached out again, because he remembered that he told me that back in March. And so then we met up and we went to the service together. Okay. Let me just stop for a second here. Is it mine in the shot? Okay. Who said I love you first? Mmm. I'd be interested. I'd be interested to know what she said to this. I don't actually remember. Oh, I think that was me. <laughs> I think it was me. Granted, I knew from the Lord already at that point, but I think it was me. <laughs> was he what you expected? He was more than what I expected because I only saw a little bit, and the more I got to know him, it was just so much more, <laughs> so much more. Yes and no. She. She was everything that I prayed for and everything that I asked for. The Lord was, he delivered exceedingly and abundantly above all, all what I expected, all what I thought of when I was uh, planning for and preparing for my wife. Uh, but see, she is so much more than that. So much more than that. So uh, it's, a, it's a yes and no. Do you believe that he is the one for you? 100%. So after we became friends in February, 17 days later, uh, I'm going to give you the fast forwarded version of this, but 17 days later, uh, we went to a church service in the morning. And during that service, the Lord had told Derek that I was going to be his wife. And at that point, Derek didn't tell me. And we had plans to go with a, a few friends to a Jesse the Planet service later that same day. And during that service, the Lord told me that Derek was going to be my husband. And I didn't tell him anything. So on the way home, we dropped off everyone. And I was the last one that Derek dropped off. And he handed me a letter that he had written that morning. And in that letter, he basically told me that I was going to be his wife. And I looked at him and I told him that I knew because the Lord had told me a little while before. And so that's how I knew that Derek was going. How would you describe her to someone who doesn't know her? She's the best person I know. And if someone, anyone, could have her 
in their lives, their life is going to be significantly better with her in it than with her not in it. That's a short answer. I have a long answer for that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Strong and he is what a godly man should be. Um, he is an example of what it is to be self-disciplined and to strive to be better and to have the faith that the Bible talks about and to live up to that in action and in his words. What is one of the most valuable things you've learned today? Oh faith. Faith. I really admire, I don't, I don't think it's one specific uh, lesson, like one specific thing I've seen her do that <clears throat> I, learned, I learned from, but just knowing her throughout our relationship, I watch the way that she, she moves and I, and I watch the way that she, one, hears from the Lord. Um, she stands on her own two feet and knows the Lord's voice. And then I've learned how to be obedient from that. Like she, her, her, her obedience it, to what she hears from the Lord, in spite of her fears, her concerns, her doubts, or whatever, She's, I've never seen her delay, not even one second, once she hears the voice of the Lord. Or how did you get yourself ready to be in a relationship? Oh my gosh, that's years, years. I made that decision when I was 15 uh, to actively get myself ready to be in a relationship, but more so my focus was on being the right person and growing with the Lord and being with Him side by side and everything that I did, giving Him glory and honor and everything that I did. And in doing that, that prepared me for Derek um, because it allowed the Lord to shape me into who I needed to be as an individual. So that way when we came together, it was a powerhouse. <laughs> um, so that, that decision I made at 15 and I've been, I've been doing that since. So making active choices with not knowing who Derek was, not knowing what he looked like, but knowing that he was there and knowing that God had something for me. So I was preparing for him, even though I didn't know who he was. So when he stepped into my life, I was like, all right, that's him right there. Years ago, uh, when I first gave my life to the Lord and, and really found out that he, that he had such a great life and a, such a great future for me, uh, that he was the one who planted the desires in my heart to have a, a wife, to, to have a family. And I found out what his word says about a wife, that she is a good thing. That, that, that finding a, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. That a wife is not a ball and chain, she is not a, a battle axe, that, that she is a blessing that brings increased favor into your life. When I, when I found that out from the word of God and I decided to believe it and take it at face value, then that was really when I made the decision that, okay, if I'm, if I'm really going to, if, if he's put this desire in me, that means that it already belongs to me, but I need to start acting as if it, she's already in my life. The only difference between where I am now as a single guy versus where I will be as a married man, the only change is really me. Um, so I started, I changed the way that I, I spoke, I changed the way that I uh, thought. I, I spoke, and I don't know if she if she said anything about this, but when we first met and started just having conversations, I know it caught her off guard because I would, and I didn't realize I was doing this. My wife so existed. I, she, she was already a part of my life even before Alexis and I met that when we met she thought I was married because I kept talking about my wife. I kept saying positive factual statements about my wife in the present tense um, and, I, and I really it, it was believing that she already existed little from, from little things like uh, like making two cups of coffee in the morning just getting in the habit of, no, this person already exists. This person is real to me. Um, from, from that to changing the way that I behaved with, with other women. Uh, not that I was uh, inappropriate or, or anything of that nature, but really just going out of my way to, to, to treat other women as if they were not only not my wife, but someone else's wife. Uh, also, 
Another really big thing, another really big thing that I did was get serious about where I'm going in life. Sitting down and writing down my value system, keeping that in front of me at all times so that I'm always filtering my, deci my, my decisions and my thought process through my value system and not my comfort zone. That was one of the first things I did when I, when I heard from the Lord that, hey, your wife is coming soon. Uh, I really, I'm prepared for it. I think that the, the evidence of expectation is preparation. What do you believe is the secret ingredient to a winning relationship? Individual relationships with the Lord. Definitely individual relationships with the Lord. Because when you know the Lord, you hear His voice, you know what He sounds like. When you walk with Him, there's so much clarity in your own personal life and then there's so much clarity when two people become a, a pair and there's clarity in that relationship because when one is close to the Lord the other's not it's just so uneven but when two are individually close to the Lord and then they come together and they bring that to the table that's that's the secret ingredient that that helps people to one have peace in a relationship and and to strive and to pursue the purpose that the Lord has for them First and foremost, keeping God at the center. Remembering that that He is He is the one who brought the gift of a spouse into your life in the first place. And that if you keep Him at the center of that, um, He's going to set you up to succeed. So that, that would be first and foremost. I, I think outside of that, the responsibility that we've taken is to always remember that we've been brought together like we're, we're gifts to each other. Um, that the relationship <clears throat> and even the other person is more is, is more uh, important of more of more value than my own wants, needs, and desires. I'm just really looking at it from a from a selfish perspective. Um, but definitely, first and foremost, keeping keeping the Lord at the center of the relationship. Is there anything else you would like to tell him? That I love him. And that I trust him. <laughs> no, I'm getting mushy. Um, <laughs> that I trust him with everything and that I am so looking forward to everything that our future holds and that I'm so happy it's him, so happy it's him because I know that when I prayed to the Lord and I said, God, I don't want to choose him, but I want you to choose him because who better to choose him than you? And God came through and not only did he come through, but he outdid himself and he chose somebody way better than I could ever, ever imagine or ever pick. And I know that Derek did a lot of hard work to get to that place, and I'm so proud of him. I'm so thankful because he got ready for me. Hey, darling, I ain't never seen a smile like that. The way it lights up this room, you're a dream come true And it's only the beginning And I love the way your hair curls When you let it hang below your shoulders I thought that I should let you know That either way you're beautiful to me question is there anything else you would like to tell her yes it's something that I, I've told her before but this will be the last time I'm telling her that I'm not gonna make you wait anymore <laughs> and yes I talked to your dad okay <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my
But what's a man supposed to do? But sit back and enjoy the view and think, man, how did I get so lucky? Some people say there is no God. I know he's real. Cause we had a conversation. We made a deal. That if he lended you to me, I love you like this church. Sickness or health. Better our words and just like the sun keeps his promise to rise I promise to love you for the rest of my life And just like a bird hums a song in the spring I'm captured by your song Hey darling, just you wait and see Never settle, never settle God has someone already being prepared to be that person for you. You just gotta work on him. Never.